This is Radio Free Hillsdale 101.7 FM. I'm Scott Bertram, and with me today is State Senator Mike Shirky. Senator, how are you? Uh, good morning, Scott. I'm on uh, US 12, heading south to the beautiful city of Hillsdale here, and I'll be there in about 20 minutes. But I've got some drive time here that I could choose to spend with you. Well, we, we appreciate that. Uh, SenatorMikeShirky.com. Find him on Facebook as well, serving the 16th State Senate District. That's Branch Hillsdale and Jackson Counties. Senator, a couple of things to chat about this week. And I wanted to start with uh, the budget because uh, the budget is done. It's done early. Um, what uh, I, don't, I don't expect you to go line by line, of course. But uh, what's in this newly approved budget? Well, first, Scott, I want to highlight that this, we're now 8 for 8 where budgets are completed uh, early in June as opposed to late September or even October. That was the practice in years past. Mm -hmm. No emergencies, no shutdowns. And in this particular budget, which is, of course, for next year, starting October of this year, it uh, actually projects spending less money uh, total and less money general fund than the previous budget. So that is a very big deal. Uh, the, The highlights, of the budget are that we found another $350 million to add to the $2.1 million that we are, excuse me, $2.1 billion that we are, have added to road funding since 2017. And now we're experiencing almost as many calls in the office, Scott, complaining about road construction in Orange Barrel <laughs> as we have, as we're complete receiving about uh, road conditions. Right. So it's, uh, in fact, uh, anybody who makes a trek through the Jonesville slash Hillsdale area uh, experienced that firsthand right now. Um, the other big highlights are we're spending, adding more funding on a per pupil basis to schools than we've done in almost 20 years. And we're closing the gap between those schools that are funded at a higher level and those at the foundational level. And uh, it's, uh, it's all good. Uh, and then lastly, we're doing some experimenting with some grants uh, regarding school safety, and I think we put aside nearly $60 million to be available for schools to apply for, uh, for their choice of whether they want to harden schools or they want to hire different uh, staff. Uh, included in that is a specific line item for more mental health services. So this is not the end of that investment. It's just the beginning, and we're trying to experiment with the best way to do it so that we're not dictating what schools should do, and that we certainly don't want to turn schools into prisons. All right, State Senator Mike Shirky, uh, wanted to also follow up with you this week on a couple of issues. One, uh, both we've talked about multiple times. One is the uh, the, the ballot initiative in November to uh, legalize recreational uh, marijuana use, and we had talked previously about the, the, the need, uh, in, in your opinion, or the opportunity for the legislature to do something about it uh, before it hit the ballot in November, um, and in fact, the state House and Senate did did nothing on this. So where do we stand now? Yeah, I'm disappointed to report to you that we were not able to muster enough votes in the uh, House. The Senate, I believe, we had the votes, but not, we fell about 14 or so votes short in the House to take it off the ballot, and what I call, this is my, my words now, I characterize as putting it into a box and regulating it properly, uh, because it, it now on now it goes on the ballot in November. Uh, it'll be one of four or five ballot initiatives that people will have to inform themselves about, and it's the most dangerous one because it it portrays itself as regulating recreational marijuana as we do alcohol, but that is a very misrepresentation of extreme represent, misrepresentation of what the actual bill says. So it's dangerous, and uh, we'll be mustering statewide a pretty aggressive just vote no campaign uh, focused on the recreational marijuana again i'm sorry that we weren't able to take it off the ballot and remove that uncertainty so now we've got to go to plan b and and beat it what the uh, the few polls that i've seen uh, around the state show that it is uh, at least at, at now the polls are just a snapshot there's months to go but uh, likely could uh, pass if things don't don't change by November. Uh, what are the key messages you think are important to get across to, to people between now and then? I think the number one key message is that we have implemented, Michigan has implemented a very rigorous 
a regulatory structure for medical marijuana. And it's probably the most, the most conservative and the most robust in the nation. And if this ballot initiative passes, it will basically obsolete that. And that would be a shame. That would be a shame. And so that, that is the number one most dangerous thing. There's a couple of other elements, like it's uh, unrestricted as to uh, any household can have up to 12 plants. And the way the plants have developed in the most recent years and evolved, the, the, the uh, output of a given plant is enormous. And so 12 plants in every household in Michigan would be an, a, an unbelievable amount of uh, marijuana that we just don't need circulating. And what it would end up being is that it ended up being sold, you know, illegally. And so I think those are the two things, two most important things to keep in mind. It'll destroy our medical marijuana system, mm-hmm. which even when, even for people who don't necessarily agree with it, at least it's very highly regulated. And then it'll also just, it just be a, create a, egregious amounts of uh, a weed across the state. State Senator Mike Shirky with us, serving the 16th State Senate District, Branch Hillsdale, Jackson Counties. Find him at SenatorMikeShirky.com. I'm Scott Bertram with you, Radio Free Hillsdale, 101.7 FM. The other update, uh, I guess we'll get the update first, and then and then I wanted to follow up with uh, a piece I saw from Nolan Finley over the weekend in, in the Detroit News. But I believe since the last time we've talked, uh, the, the House, both the House and Senate have approved that Medicaid uh, reform bill with work requirements. Uh, the governor has said uh, has uh, indicated he will sign it, though I don't think he he has as of yet. I, I didn't see that news come across. But this is finally uh, going to be in place. At least the uh, and this is really asking for permission from Washington for the ability to do this. Yes, right. And and I'm uh, delighted to tell you that the governor has told me to my face that you know he is going to sign this. I, he has not signed it yet. I think it's just a matter of timing. Mm-hmm. And because uh, he's been traveling quite a bit, but he's fully engaged, and he understands that it is very necessary. Every every business that I know of, and probably that you know of, uh, is uh, their their biggest need right now is workers. Um, so uh, we were able to muster the votes in both chambers, and and uh, we were we designed this uh, in a very unique way, so that it primarily relies upon the uh, self-reporting of enrollees, and only if they're found to be uh, misrepresentation or fraudulent in the reports would they have any exposure to losing their benefits but they do have to work on average of 80 hours per month uh, there's there's some reasonable exemptions in here uh, the only thing that I'm disappointed in is that is in my effort to make sure that it was not an expensive system to actually implement and administer mm-hmm. uh, we delay actual implementation until next the end of next year uh, but right now I'm working with the department on a, a round of, of uh, communications to the eligible enrollees so they have plenty of notice to go out and engage in the workforce now instead of waiting until the, till the, uh, till the deadline actually comes up. And I think that will generate some fruits, and, and uh, I think you're going to bring up the Nolan Finley's article that you read this weekend that hits, hits the nail on the head as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, let me uh, get to that. Nolan Finley had a column in the Detroit News on Sunday. Uh, he was up in Mackinac Island uh, talking with a uh, restaurant owner, a guy who owns eight restaurants and 20 hotels in Mackinac City, slowing work on the completion of a new hotel because he can't recruit hospitality workers. He says the pay isn't the problem. Bartenders can pull in 200 to 300 a night with tips during the season. He even offers subsidized health insurance, but he says he can't compete with Medicaid. Quoting him, I hear all the time from people who turn down my job offers that they don't want to lose their welfare by taking a seasonal job. He's encouraged by the state legislature's efforts to attach work requirements to Medicaid and food stamp benefits. Again, quoting, anything we can do to get people back in the workforce would be great. Uh, unemployment rate is, is, is low, very low. Every virtually every restaurant I go to, Senator, uh, anywhere you know near near Hillsdale or even in the surrounding area, is looking for help. There's there, you know there's posters in the window now hiring. Inquire within. There are these positions available uh, and not necessarily being filled. And I think Nolan Finley's story is something we've talked about previously. Getting those people back into the workforce is going to be a help all the way around. It'll be good for the economy. Good for the businesses and especially good for these folks and their families. 
Uh, and I believe that once folks engage in, in work, even if they begin to do it on a part-time basis, they'll discover that, uh, that the benefits of that and are uh, far away the cost. And the fact that they could continue to work and still be remain eligible is, was purposeful. And, and uh, my, next, my next personal project, Scott, is to address this thing called the cliff. Mm-hmm. And that uh, that is for those of, in the that are low income jobs, low low skill, low paid jobs, uh, the, who currently are eligible for Medicaid. You know, the day they grow above that one hundred that uh, certain number, they lose their eligibility. And I want to provide for some transition there. Uh, one of the reasons I want to do that is to encourage employers to actually hire these folks, and also encourage these uh, elig- these uh, Medicaid recipients. To know that they won't, there won't be a cliff. Now we're going to have to go back to the federal government and ask for a waiver for this. Uh, but and we're crafting that over the summer as to how that might look. And Michigan may be the first in the nation to actually try this. Hmm. And I believe, uh, if done properly, we will continue to drive down the roles of those uh, enrolled in Medicaid and drive up those engaged in the workforce. And of course, that's the goal. So uh, just stay tuned. We're, we're not done with the re- uh, entitlement reforms yet. <laughs> All right. State Senator Mike Shirky, we'll talk about that in the near future, I know. SenatorMikeShirky.com. Find him on Facebook. Uh, just search for Senator Mike Shirky. Senator, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome, Scott. Have a great day and stay hydrated. That's State Senator Mike Shirky from the 16th Senate District, Branch Hillsdale and Jackson Counties. Find more of our conversations and interviews at our SoundCloud page, soundcloud.com slash Radio Free Hillsdale. And I'm Scott Bertram on Radio Free Hillsdale, 101.7 FM.